Spiritual Teaching 244 Love Each Other 1. My love and charity are among you, O beloved people of Israel. 2. Men and women who bend your neck before my presence. I bless you, spirits of the chosen people of God in the three eras, and that today you open your eyes again to contemplate my presence and my light. Blessed are you. 3. Get to the bottom of my word. Christ is communicating through human understanding to give you the teaching, but I tell you that always when I gave you my word, Jehovah the Father and the Holy Spirit have been there. Do not seek in my divine spirit three persons but only one creative spirit, one single Father who has come to you in three different times and phases. 4. Truly I say to you, how theologians have confused humanity, but I give you my light to save you, redeem you and stand up, telling yourself with truth that it will not be your mind that reveals these teachings to the Spirit, but the Spirit who reveals to the human mind spiritual and divine knowledge. That is why I tell you, it will not be theologians, but the spiritualists, the true disciples of the Holy Spirit, the spirits who learn to communicate and be in contact with my divine Spirit, to hear my voice and feel my caress, my strength and lull. 5. That is why at this moment, I have limited myself to a single ray of light to communicate with you through a single understanding and I speak to you as a father with my own word, which was the one who incarnated in the second era, with my spirit who has always been in me, because I am myself and from whom all of you have sprouted. Acknowledge the true divine trinity, seeking a single spirit, a single essence and a single warmth. 6. You have entered the time of evolution, of the manifestation and revelation of the Holy Spirit, and each of my revelations will awaken the people and make them meditate. There will be moments of confusion in which you will say, Father, reason always is in you. The truth is you and I am always a toddler in your presence. 7. I receive you on this day of commemoration, and the tradition that is still with you will be erased in future times and that the advent of the divinity and the spiritual world will not be commemorated in a single day. I want you to always be in contact with me and with your brothers. 8. In the first era, you gave me a worship of fear and not of love towards me, which sprang only from your material part, because you had not yet discovered in the heart of the Father his infinite and perfect love for his creatures, and you only looked in me to an inexorable, severe and just Father. You had my laws and you kept them out of fear of my justice, and I waited for the time when you would recognize me as a Father loved and not feared. But even though I gave you great proofs of my love, my warmth and my tenderness, you continued to fear the justice of Jehovah. You were still fearing the voice of your consciousness, through which spoke to you tirelessly. In that time of preparation and awakening for the Spirit, in which you began to take the first steps with firmness, on the path that would lead your Spirit towards mine, I gave you to understand that it was not my will to enter into communication with the Spirits of the Hereafter, because you were not yet ready for it and you would not know how to make good use of that grace. The spirit world was not prepared nor you to have communication with each other. But the intuition of this already existed as well as the faculty and grace, and that is why since then, men who sought communication with spirits were already emerging in the world. 9. The prohibition was not to be eternal. How could the father, who loves so much his children, not see the communication between themselves? How was my divine spirit to put barriers and distances, the brothers who sought each other with eagerness and love? It was not the right time and that is why I avoided it. But in my infinite love towards man, towards your own incarnate spirit, I became a man prophesying to you, anticipating these teachings beforehand, so that my coming will not be a surprise and I could find you watching and praying, in vigil and waiting for my presence. 10. I kept my promise and embodied my spirit. I came to be born as a man and to live among you, to live, to grow and die. In that time when I, your father, became a man, I gave you manifestations, lessons and teachings full of spirituality. Many revelations I gave to your spirit, which filled some of them with light and still others got confused. 11. I prepared you with my coming in the second era, so that you would raise your gaze and contemplate more closely my kingdom so that at this time your spirit would feel that the kingdom of heaven was getting closer and more clear. And then, I found among humanity great legions of invisible and intangible spirits to you, 
who were a mystery still inaccessible to your own spirit. That life that vibrated and was agitated among you, I revealed it to you, I discovered the mystery of these manifestations and I showed the theologian and the scientist that my revelation was superior to his discoveries and words. 12. I healed the sick evicted by science because their diseases were supernatural because they belonged to the spiritual nature. I liberated those possessed by the great legions of troubled spirits and they who believed in me, they rose up glorifying my name and recognizing my power. Those who did not believe in me judged and attributed those powers to evil, treating me as a sorcerer. I opened a door of light to humanity, so that you could contemplate that for the spirit there are no distances, and in the moment of my death as a man, my spirit awakened the spirits that dwelt in their graves. I raised like Lazarus from their graves and sent them among you to bear witness to their presence and their existence. 13. Your eyes contemplated them and your hearts felt them very close, because I, in that instant of proof I raised them, so that they would testify the glorious life of the Spirit, the eternal life of the hereafter, to all you that wait. And it was still my will that after passing my body through the bowels of the earth, I return to you in the form of Jesus to manifest myself before your eyes, for the first, second and many more times to leave eternally open the door that communicates the spiritual valley with this one that you currently inhabit, to give the spirits access to my promised kingdom, and that they contemplate that that door of love of the Father, of the Holy Spirit, it was forever open to all. That door closed for a time only, because your spirits were unable to pass through its thresholds, was opened by the charity of the Lord. From that moment the spirit of man awakened to the spiritual communication. 14. But it was not yet the time for the full understanding of spiritual revelations, but the thirst for these divine teachings began to envelop humanity. Men of the generations of the second began to search earnestly for the hereafter, making use of their dormant powers and gifts on their own bosom, and they found the path that led them to the Spirit Valley. 15. Humans had many setbacks and disappointments, many desecrations were committed in my work and in my spiritual world, but the Father forgave everything, contemplating the anxiety of the spirits that populated this earth for achieving communication with his God brothers. And while part of humanity yearned for the discovery of these revelations and communication with the hereafter, another party viewed with suspicion and revulsion the spiritual communication. 16. But the third era has come among you, the time when I, your very God, the same Father who came in the first era as law, the same one who became man to pour out his word among you, has come as the Holy Spirit, not to materialize as in the first time, nor to humanize myself as in the second, but to prepare yourselves through the understanding of man, communicating to me for brief moments, for later to be able to do it with you from spirit to spirit. Because now still, speaking as the Holy Spirit I had to materialize as far as my will was when speaking through man himself. 17. In a short moment a new era will open before you. The time of the grace of the Holy Spirit, in which you will find me, not through rites, nor religious ceremonies, nor through understanding, but in your own spirit. 18. The times have passed and with them the tests, the struggle, the evolution for your spirit, and now you rise in the time of the Holy Spirit as beings capable of understanding me. 19. It is no longer the time of the prohibition of communication with the spiritual there. It is no longer the time when I come to you only to prepare and promise. It is the time of the fulfillment of my promises, time to tell you that you have not only enslaved your matter on this earth, but you have also chained your spirit to material needs, being that your true abode is the infinite, it is the universe, it is the endless spiritual space that I offer you. Because no matter what your spirit is incarnated, from here you can conquer the spaces, you can truly live in the spiritual world and as close as brothers to one another. 20. If my light has erased the borders, before I have prepared you so that you can enter into communication both with my divine spirit, as with your brothers of the spiritual valley, because I do not want you to be the children of ignorance, but as disciples of my Marian Trinitarian spiritualist work, you can enter with all purity and elevation within that communication. Only the one who does not know how to prepare will not be able to remain within it. One who is stained, he will not be able to reach the happy communication that I am talking about, because I have said that what is stained does not come to me. 21. If only curiosity leads you to pretend communication with the hereafter, you will not find the truth. 
If the desire for greatness or vanity takes you, you will not obtain true communication. If the temptation clothe your heart with false ends or petty interests, you will not obtain communication with the light of my Holy Spirit. Only your respect, your clean prayer, your love, your charity, your spiritual elevation will work the prodigy that your spirit spreads its wings, crosses the spaces and reaches the spiritual mansions as far as my will. 22. That is the grace and consolation that my Holy Spirit reserved for you, so that you could contemplate a single dwelling place and you convince yourself that death and distance do not exist. That not a single one of my creatures dies for the eternal life because in this third era, you can also close in a spiritual embrace with those beings that you have known and loved and lost in this world, but that you have not lost in eternity. 23. Many of you have communicated with these beings through my peasants, but truly I tell you that this is not perfect communication and that the time is drawing near when incarnated spirits and disincarnated persons will be able to communicate with each other from spirit to spirit without using any other material or human. By inspiration, by the gift of spiritual sensitivity, revelation or thought, the eyes of your spirit will be able to feel the presence of the hereafter. Then your heart will feel the passage of the beings that populate the spiritual valley and then the rejoicing of your spirit will be great, the same as your knowledge and love towards the Father. 24. Then you will know what is the life of your spirit, who it is and who it was, recognizing yourselves without considering you with limits as small as those that correspond to your matter, because the Father tells you, yes, small indeed is your matter, how similar is your spirit to my divine spirit. 25. I speak to you for the present and for the future. I am preparing and awakening you with my word through this revelation. You will raise your plant to do the same with other men, talking to them about my divine work, not only of the third era, because what I have taught and revealed to you in it is not my complete work. What I taught and revealed to you in the first and second times are also part of it and that is why you will have to know the teachings of the three eras, so that you can be the true Trinitarians, why you have been with the Father in the three times, in his three manifestations, in his three revelations. 26. Prepare yourselves in this way, beloved people, so that tomorrow you do not confuse humanity and so that it does not exist in the heart, in the mind or in the spirit of men, a single question that leaves you in silence. But you, with the light of my spirit, can answer or illuminate everything, so that you do not leave a single spirit in confusion, but give them all life, the explanation of what man had seen shrouded in mystery, in darkness or uncertainty. 27. I am light, simplicity and truth. It is not time for you to see mysteries where everything is clarity. I am revealing my wisdom to the spirit as it elevates. As he progresses and spiritualizes, he understands more and more the revelations that he was ignorant of, and for this on the way, your spirit will eternally enjoy the new lessons that my divine spirit shows you. 28. You already have the certainty at this time that you have come to dwell on earth multiple times because you believe in the reincarnation of the spirit, but this revelation, as I have given you, will shake the world, will make revolution among men, and with it they will reach the explanation of many mysteries and the strength for his spirit, because it is the law of love and in it is my light. 29. You do not know yet, O beloved people, how many times you were in this world through different subjects and still when the flesh searches itself and asks its own spirit, you fail to contemplate your past, your previous lives. Because I, as a father, have veiled this knowledge, I have prevented your spirit through human life to discover your previous lives, this being still a prohibition of the Holy Spirit. That exists among you. But you are preparing future generations, those who will come possessing spirits of great spiritual elevation and that they are still living in the hereafter, where they are crumbling and rising to come to this planet. They will be given by my Holy Spirit the faculty of remembering their previous lives. No your past because it will be useful to your own spirit. If I have not granted it to you, it is because I still find fragility in your spirit and even more so in matter and I understand that you would cower, contemplating your past. The one who was sorely lacking and offended his father, you would not have the strength to resist repentance and the claim of your conscience. The one who was great would fill with vanity. The one who was small would feel humiliated and in his heart the desire for revenge would be born. That is why your father, who is perfect wisdom, has not yet wanted to reveal to you through your matter, the past of your spirit. 30. 
For future generations this grace is reserved, for whom knowledge of their past will not dent, and you will be to them as a book open before their eyes. Those spirits will be the revelators of many mysteries, those that come to clarify the life of the spirit through their own material lives, those that speak to this world of other worlds and of that long path that is the spiritual path. 31. Prepare yourselves, people, so that you may inherit this preparation to those who will spring from you, so that this grace exist in your descendants, so that the matters that you engender and conceive be instruments docile to the spirits of future generations, because I find myself preparing through you and them a new world for this humanity. You are the wheat that I am growing at this time and watering with the crystalline waters of my teachings. 32. The incarnated spirits and those who inhabit the spiritual valley pay homage to me at this moment. All creation she gives me her tribute of love. 33. He who did not prepare himself on this day to receive me carries sadness in his heart. But that door that was closed for me, I will open with the key of my love, because I am the pilgrim who visits everyone, to leave as a trace of my step, my perfect teaching. 34. My voice comes to awaken those who sleep and to strengthen those who are tired, to make them understand that it is short the time available and it is necessary to take advantage of it. 35. My word has been for everyone, the same for the wise as for the rude. I have spoken to all of them in one way, humble and simple, because before the spiritual chair of the Divine Master, you are all toddlers. But within that word humble, how much life, how much truth and how many revelations you have found, having not yet come to understand it and to analyze it completely. 36. Great is the responsibility of those who have listened to me at this time, because they must be like a seed of regeneration in this world and an encouragement for men to convert. My new apostles and peasants will carry the resurrection to those who have died to the life of grace while still living materially. They will hear the voice of my envoys, similar to that get up and walk that Lazarus heard. 37. Some have prepared by developing their gifts and practicing my divine lessons and full of determination and hope they get ready to fight. Others, on the contrary, are crestfallen because they have not used the time, they have not fought yet. I speak to everyone and enlighten so that each one takes what is due. 38. I do not want to see some satisfied by the good performance, presenting the golden wheat in abundance, while others they hide their empty hands in sorrow, because my joy cannot be absolute. But I do not want to take away the joy of the one who has fulfilled his mission, because to show me his harvest he had to work, stay awake and often cry, but they also have to revive and stimulate the timid, the cold, those who have become tired, so that there will be joy in the whole of this people when the master comes to ask you for an account of the result of your work. 39. With love I am forging your heart, so that works of charity and brotherhood may spring from it. 40. Always keep walking forward and do not think like those who have settled for what they have done, believing to have already conquered the promised land. 41. You are on the path of the spirits traced by God from eternity. It is not a road visible to human eyes because if it were, the lands of Canaan would continue to be the goal and I took the spirits from there to disperse them throughout the world. Like you who, having inhabited the East in times past, you have now arisen in the West without ever leaving the spiritual path. 42. For some the symbol represented in material form is still indispensable. Others carry in their mind the figures representing spiritual forces. When you come to true spirituality, you will not have need for visible or invisible images or figures to believe in the presence of the divine or to understand its sense. 43. You are forerunners because new generations of you will sprout and in them new spiritual legions will incarnate. 44. You are preparing the way for them so that their worship, their practices and communication with me are more advanced. 45. Walk with a firm step and you will climb step by step. Strip your worship of errors and materialism and every day you will give greater elevation and freedom to your spirit. My peace be with you.